Oh, I know. Oh, I just threw him, man. And you can't do that in Australia. <laughs> We're not in Australia. Just sit there and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> We're just continuing our talks, like I said, we, we basically picked out a scenario which was uh, winter storm preparedness. Uh, last week we talked, or the last time we were all together, we pretty much talked about ways to kind of heat your home in a, an emergency situation where you had to have heat. Sound. Uh, I guess today we were going to talk a little bit about, uh, I call it a get home bag or a bag that we can keep in the car that really either for winter or it could be whatever. Just get home in case you put the car to break down. Whatever the case. Too loud, so this we're gonna play this video here. Is that uh thing over the lit up blue that with the antenna on it? Yeah. Alright set up. Okay, good. We'll have to, I'll have to check the sound here when it comes on. Like that, I never pre screened it. I have no idea. Black eyes, slippery pavements, high winds, really snow, or reduced visibility due to fog, rain, and snowfall. It all happened within a few miles. If your car slips off the road during the blizzard, a routine drive can turn into a nightmare. Do these things before you leave to make that road trip safer. So, tell someone your route and when you expect to arrive. If you're not on schedule, the designated person should contact the area police. If there are changes in plan, call that person and update. Warm clothing. Make sure everyone in the vehicle has, as a minimum, a warm coat, hat, gloves, and boots along. Throw in a couple of blankets and a sleeping bag in the trunk for extra protection. Lots of gas. The vehicle should have a full tank of gas before you leave to go anywhere. Top off the gas tank when it gets about half full. Daytime travel. It's <laughs> yeah. not all possible. Schedule your travel in the daytime. Stay on known routes. Only travel routes you know to be safe. Not rural service roads and cutoff roads that are unfamiliar. Food and water. Assemble a complete emergency kit to carry in your car. Here's what the Idaho, Oregon, AAA recommend you carry in your car. Now this is not a complete kit, but you need to start somewhere. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Food and water is very important. Food will give you the fuel to stay warm. Water will keep you hydrated, which is also a requirement for staying warm. Tire chains can keep you from sliding off the road. Paper towels have many, many uses. Take a longer roll. Sand or key litter can be placed under the tires for traction. A sleeping bag can be very important. It will allow you to stay comfortably inside your vehicle. Jumper cables will help you get your car started if the battery went dead. Flares are useful for signaling or in a pinch starting a fire. A rechargeable flashlight or one that you can crank to recharge with an AM FM radio is important. It also should be able to receive the weather channel. Make sure every member of your party has a pair of insulated winter boots. Each member of your party should also have an insulated winter coat, preferably with a hood. A hat and glove should be a no-brainer. Take along a fire-making kit with plenty of fire starters. A first aid kit should be in your car year-round. Don't forget a tarp. You'll use it for many things, including sitting on when you're changing a tire or possibly sheltering yourself from rain or snow while you work on the car. Your best shelter, if you do break down, is inside your car. Don't leave unless it's absolutely necessary or you may be in further danger if you stay in it. So this is a good place to start. It's not the best kit. Your best kit will be what you make. Think about your area and what would most suit your needs. This is SurvivalCommonSense.com. Thank you for watching. That was a good video. Okay, one of the mistakes some people make too with those is they'll sit in their car and damn snow gets up so high and actually the exhaust. The exhaust 
Killed him. Yeah. You got to get out of every show. You should keep that. You should keep the door. I mean, in some ways, you want the snow to pack around the car as much as you can. Just for ventilation. But you got to keep that door open to where you can get in and out. But what were you? Well, in the wintertime, I, I parked on the road and left with the car on, but I left when the crack. Uh, well, you, you guys know I keep the battery packs in the car with the solar panel, the big battery. Well, I added two more. I didn't tell you guys. Oh, uh, Dan might know. I know Steve knows. But I added two more uh, 1,000 amp uh, Caterpillar batteries. And I, I put them in parallel. Uh, and, and I actually put a small 100 watt heater and mounted it on top of my box that the heaters are on. And we actually, when we're setting the sheets, as you can ask Steve, we run that polish in the car to toasty warm. And that thing don't even hurt them batteries whatsoever. The next day they're fully charged with the solar panels again. Okay. Works That's great. And we run them for probably four or five hours a night. I think I watched the video one other time they were talking about, uh, I think it was something like run the car for 15 minutes and then shut it off for right. half hour, 45 minutes, or whenever. When you start getting cold, cold right, in some place, you can't let it go. Well, I actually been looking for one to put in the truck. But the little uh, plastic <laughs> shelf. There's a lot of people. And you see any of those around here? No. I've never seen it. The little plastic snow shovel that they have. Yeah, I have seen them. Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. Yeah, I've seen them. Walmart has them. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I got that heat. I have my heat tool. I'm hoping it's in my truck. Um, that, that I brought down on ship because what's kind of nice about that too, you can bend it into a, a pick like action and, and let it roll out with it too. Arm shovel with what you're talking Yeah, I got one. I got, I got one of those. Plus, I got the ones that got the pick and all when I got up there at Christmas when he had right. the store. I'm like, you know what? I, I wish I had went to the store. I didn't know he had all that kind of stuff. I think he's still got the stuff if you get a hold of him. I think he'll yeah. still sell you it out of his basement some of it. <clears throat> um, I mean, like I said, I, I keep a bag in my car because I'm on the road with my job. I'm on the road all the time. And I got to thinking, I thought, you know, sometimes. You know, I'm out late in the, in the evening. That's what I do right there. Yeah. But what happens to where I throw it into a tree or something right. coming down a slippery road and I, I can't stay there. there. Yeah. If I have to walk out or whatever, or who knows? That's why I put it in a backpack, but uh, in case I would ever have to leave for some reason, right. and I'd pack it out. Just grab it and go. I mean, most, most people, that, when, you, when you read the, the really devastating stories, there's a series of stupid mistakes that they make along the way. You know what I mean? They go back a road that's unplowed and yeah. the weather you know, calling for a severe storm, and they go back up on the skiing trail road that has <laughs> yeah. that's closed until spring. <laughs> yeah. you know, and then they end up sitting back and of course nobody's looking in those areas for plus I mean, even though we're in West Virginia for the most part we're in a, a populated area. There's not too many areas around here. You're not going to be able to walk for help. Yeah. Right. Now, out in Colorado or Wyoming or something. Yeah. But I can tell you, you know where there's a stretch of road in West Virginia, though? From Clarksburg to Parkersburg. I forget the route number across there. There's times when you're coming through that sucker. It is like the most desolated place on earth. You're lucky to see three cars and it's an interstate. Yeah. You know, like, any time you got 36 inches of snow. Ability reduced. You know, you're not. If you can't get on a hard ball road, yeah, you ain't going nowhere. That thing is from Davis to Mount Storm. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. you break yeah. down all areas. <laughs> ain't nobody ever yeah. gonna get you. Yeah. And, and the other thing with that too is, I mean, that happened like down in Frederick or something. When all that snow came in, people were either stuck in their cars or they just parked right. them and then left, which then right. makes the traffic jam. Right. So even if you can move, you can't because now there's cars in your way. Yeah, they have yeah, they 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 down all night. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. had right. to clear the aggregate. Yeah, yeah like they, 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 ended up, like, they ended up towing like hundreds of cars. Because yeah. I think they were just taking them over the side for the most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, an example on staying with your vehicle is, uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, where the guy was actually like a, a small per TV personality. Him and his wife got trapped in a snowstorm. She stayed in the car. He went for help. Well, they found her, and then when they found him, he was dead, but she I was alive. I think they waited, like, what, a week? Yeah. They were there, like, long. Yeah, he, five days or something. They yeah, he actually miles. burned a towel, yeah. tire and all that to stay warm, and then he left because he didn't think anybody was coming after him, so he left, and, of course, they found him dead, but she was still yeah, alive. Yeah, it was, it was the freak thing that they found her, too. I don't right. remember what it was. It was, like, some guys just out snowmobile, snowmobile. Right. You know, yeah. 
Yeah. Because well, they weren't looking. They weren't looking. They weren't supposed to be where they were. Right. You know, and nobody was like, well, they, yeah, they said they were, they just were looking spur at the moment. Different area. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's, there's different things you can do to kind of, I mean, not every situation you're going to be able to protect yourself. No. If you go down over an embankment and then you're trapped in the car for a couple of days and you can't, you have no mobility, right. you're kind of screwed. Well, you can, you can prepare for anything, anything you can think of and it's still not going to be enough. There's yeah. something going to happen. Murphy's Law, you know. You know what? Yeah. There's nothing to say to this. You know, who knows? One of us ain't driving in Wyoming or Montana one winter. You know, you're out there for whatever yeah. reason. You know, you're right. out there. You know, it's nice to know because, like you said, it isn't like here. I don't know if you've ever been out in sections of Colorado no. and stuff. It's like, holy, it's like being up, it's like being up on Dolly Sod <laughs> yeah. where you go, oh, there's a light over there. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. That, yeah that's what it's like. Yeah. You, just, you drive for miles and never see a house. <laughs> there's kids out there that go to school when they bring, they come to school on Sunday night and stay at the school, public school, oh, right. until Friday and then go home because they live more right. They live on 20,000 acre ranches. You know, wow. it's an hour and a half. To the, it's an hour and a half from their house to the front where, where the owners, or where the highway is. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, like that, I, I mean, I don't know how many you, you keep bagging your truck. Yeah. I keep stuff in it. I, I don't have it organized into a bag. I just keep it wrapped in the car if I can. I, I'm, I'm in the process of you know, learning to bag up. Well, let's put it this way, Tom. He's going to start there, ain't you? Yeah. Now, what's Paul say about my stuff, Steve? Ross, you got to get some of the stuff out of here. I have no room for groceries, Ross. Like hell. The thing is water. You know, a lot of times your car's out there parked and the water's a solid. Yeah. Yeah. And see, I don't carry. That's something I do need to get from Yeah, definitely. Oh, you should, yeah. Something to melt into it. Well, yes, yeah, because 90%, I'd say 95% of the time, my vehicle with my job, I get a case of water in the beginning of the week and it, usually I keep it all right. the week. So 95 to 98% of the time, I always have water. It's just right. not in a container in that bag. I'm thinking of a, a gallon paint can with a yeah, quart heater in it and put some blankets around it. That way, it doesn't rattle in your trunk. Uh -huh. Thermal blanket. Yeah, the little thermal blanket. You just keep it compact, tight kit. And then you can use the the one gallon paint can as a boiling pot. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, definitely. Like cook, cook and water, you know. So, and yeah, with the I little heater that we worked on, yeah, yeah. put the one quart down inside the gown, put thermal blanket, the lighter, all that, yeah, inside the gown. Little, little, yeah. You do that. Then you take everything out and, and have it. You it's like self-contained. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. self-contained. That'd be awesome. Keep it all in there. Yeah. Light tarp. You know, not a heavy one, but a light one. If you have some fishing line, just in case the boat. Now, if you're afraid of keeping water in your car because it'll freeze, you know what I mean? I keep mine in, like, that little red cooler underneath there. If you keep oh, them in a half decent yeah. cooler, that, they won't freeze up as quick. I no. mean, it's got to get really cold. Yeah, and put well, them all the way to the top. Mine, I, I usually get them half of your pack. <laughs> and when the case is, and like I said, it'll be January, February, and it'll sit at my house overnight, you know. And I'll come out and they'll be about half ice, but mm -hmm. after a little while they'll right. come down and stuff. But again, with that, yeah, you can just take your knife and cut open the bottom and stir the ice in that pan and then... I mean, worse comes to worse, you just put the bottom in the sleep bag with you and... Yeah. Well, you guys do realize, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can actually open the top of that bottle up and put it in a fire, yeah. Yeah. and it'll melt. It won't. It'll, it'll melt, boil, whatever you need to do. Right in that. I mean, it's not the healthiest thing to do, but if you're not going to die, you know, keep you from dying. Yeah. Worry about cancer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, ten years later, worry about that. How do they cut my Yeah, I always look at things, or at least I started once I started for started preparing like this. I've always heard a saying, if something would happen to me right now, would I have enough to keep me alive? <clears throat> so I think of that when I'm in my vehicle. Do you, if, whatever the case. Do I have enough, if I was stranded, do I have enough to keep me alive? Well, Whether that's for 
me, you, and Dan, we're going to live for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Todd, Todd, my thing is, see, I would survive because I'm always setting the sheets. And stuff. <laughs> Something happened. I got all the food out. Well, he's got a debit card. He's got, he, he, he. <laughs> hey, shit, it's the fed. I'm taking what I need. <laughs> I had to go to Pittsburgh one time, and the people I was going to stay with, and I had a court date. Well, they had put my court date off for a week, and I, I went up on the train, so I was kind of stranded there. I put my debit card in that Mac machine and it took it. And oh, I, didn't it back out. Out. I didn't have a penny. Oh, 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 it just oh, took oh, my card. Oh, I had like oh, 75 oh, cents and I was there for a week and it was a snowstorm. I was in a pair of cowboy boots, a wool wrench. I didn't have no blankets, no place. When I went in there Friday for the court hearing, <laughs> I smelled the Terrible. <laughs> I had made a, I had made the Boy Scout leave thing. And I took a stolen garbage bag out of a public transit van, used that as my sleeping bag. Oh yeah. I lived for a week freezing my butt off. Hey, Cliff, has that been there for seven years ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just been minutes to what you did. <laughs> <laughs> you just been minutes to what you did. Yeah, I'm cut down. And then my, my 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 father, I was living with my father at the time, and I was going through a divorce, and I was just, everything was bad in land. I'm calling my father, and he's in Atlantic City, just living it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great story. But yeah, I like to think, you know, do I have enough in my car to me at any time? Hey, something happens. Do you have enough to keep you alive? I said, I knew up the Dolly Sides and Spruce Knob, when you go hunting up there, if you break your ankle up there and somebody doesn't know what you're missing, you're dead. It's not, oh, you might make, you're not going to live through the night up there, first of all, unless you've got the right stuff on you. you you're talking about temperatures shelter. down in the single digits of wind chill into a minus, minus two. Oh, yeah. And like I said, if somebody isn't looking for you and they don't find you fairly quick or you have some thermal blankets and something that you could get, you know, maybe you uh, get, get against the rocks, keep the wind off. Or of make a thing. fire in a shelter of some sort. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the, what, the three, three? Yeah. Three, hour, or three hours without shelter. Right. Three, uh, three, three, three days without water, water and three weeks without water. That's, that's what I'm three. saying. My thing would be, if, if I, which is a good idea, if there's these uh, chocolate-covered... Uh, Coffee beans you can get. They're excellent to keep on you for, for energy sources. Keep hardtack candy on you. You know what I mean? And the main thing you're going to need is water because you can go a long time without right. food. So. Yeah. And, and sugar is also a good thing to keep in a first aid kit. It keeps your energy somebody, up. Well, none of that. For, you, I have to run to the car to get my first aid kit for somebody that's diabetic. Diabetic. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. There was that apoplectic shock. Is that what they call Yeah. Um, Ollie's up there had the Sasquatch swim gym, which are about that mm -hmm. long, and that made around for 79 cents. I think about going up by like 10 bucks worth. I mean, I'll, I'll eat some of them, but they keep, you, they keep forever. You yeah, can throw a couple of those. I tell you what, yeah, one of those, one of those. Yeah, there's so much salt in them that they ain't going to go back. One of those could keep you alive for a day. I mean, oh, yeah. You eat one a day and have enough calories and nutrition. Well, yeah, if you're just sitting there waiting for someone to come find you, that's fine. Now, if you, yeah, if you're trying. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to die. I'd either eat it and die or just sit or die, one or the other. See, that, that's another thing I would like to add to that, and I just thought of that on that. I'd like to throw some crossword puzzles and stuff. Because, like I said, and I don't mind to get you in trouble. Well, like I said that one week. Just thinking, maybe I should walk out of here. Maybe I should walk out of here. Entertainment is a big entertainment is a big thing in, in shit hit the fan situation, right? It calms you down, makes you think clearer. Well, I mean, in a survival situation, I've personally never ever had to be in one. Thank God. Uh, but I can imagine it attributed to like that Friday before you go to vacation, you're watching the clock. Well, if you have nothing else to do but sit in a car, right. Makes you're going yourself nuts by just sitting there, like you said, probably turning on the key behind it. <laughs> oh, it took a bit five minutes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wonder why there ain't a tow truck here yet. Oh, it took a bit ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, because time will drag. Yeah. 
to where if you had something like that, like a crossword puzzle or something like that, at least it'd take your mind right. off of Book. Yeah, book. Oh yeah, my book. I love my books, man. I get sleep. <laughs> Unless it's bitterly cold, because then you may go to sleep, not wake up. <laughs> and the other thing I guess for winter wise is wool. Like yeah. Wool is. I think it retains seventy percent. Yeah, I got me a couple of nice wool sweaters. Even wet. Oh, you know, let me tell you how smart our ancestors used to be. They found a sandal in the Alps of a frozen, they found a frozen body who was wearing a sandal. And the sandal that he had on, the experts looked at it and said, even by today's standards, that it was up to, if not surpassing anything, that was made as far as protection and durability and everything else. So. My advice would be say, if natives wear wool, and like the, the people in the Andes Mountains wear alpaca wool, and right. there's, there's a reason why people wear a good wore reason. wool yeah. for years. Well, it's been it fantastic. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I was telling you, they did, they said that the shoe, the sandal he had on was equivalent to basically anything Nike could, you know, as good as for as support and stuff like that, you know. And he had grass in he had the grass in his boots and for insulation, like, yeah. Sandal, you know. Yeah. But yeah, and they found him at like I don't know how many thousand feet up in the Alps he was. Yeah. But it but he was I don't know, a couple thousand. I mean he was fifty seven hundred years old. Yeah, fifty seven hundred years ago. So wow. yeah, I mean you see there's a reason why you watch what the local people do and you know oh, certain yeah. areas like where you want to eat at well where find out where the local locals eat, eat right that's going to be the best place well same thing you go into a, a everybody in the desert are like why do them guys wear those you know all that wrapped up there's a reason hey, because yeah. one it gets blue ass cold at night in the desert and those burkas <coughs> keep you warm mm -hmm. i don't know if you've ever seen that you ever seen that show on I don't know if it's still on now or not. It was on Discovery or National Geographic. It was called Surviving the Tribe or Yeah, yeah it's still on. It's still on. And that one that was in Africa somewhere where they they prized their cattle. Blood. Yeah. yeah because yeah. that was their source of yeah. Yeah, not any right. nutrition, but it was a walking canteen. Yeah. They would bleed them out. They would yeah. shoot, shoot there in the side of the neck. Yeah. And that's yeah, and how they, would, they got them. They're not in Zulu. It's uh, I, I I I will think of the name of them, but they're real tall too. Yeah. For whatever reason, this race of uh, uh, or giants or like uh, drink the blood, like the yeah, average they, they type of, it, is like six feet. Yeah, milk yeah. I've seen that. They mix yeah. blood and milk with it, and that yeah, and it was an And the, the bad part about it is, once they get that blood, then they mix it with the milk. Milk. They'll be drinking it all day long, so yeah. you can imagine how thick. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. sour in your stomach. <laughs> well, it's kind of like Balut they went in the Philippines. Uh, yeah. Well, you, and you had to know how to... Much, you, I couldn't even say smell. I can eat most things, but not that. All you do is puncture it. And then they take like a, something that, like grass, they chew it up and just stick it right on that wound. And, yeah. And the cow just... Oh, Get right on, yeah. That was their, basically their yeah. panty. Yep. They got through the desert. They would go out and gather and do whatever. Well, I think I That's the one where it does the... Um, Porky <laughs> Pine, wasn't it? Mud. That one, I can't remember. Yes, I watched that enough. One, there was one where he went down in the hole and dug, dug a pit for a porcupine. Oh. And had to reach in and pull the porcupine out. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty neat. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, wool. And uh, another one that, uh, just like a simple garbage bag, mm -hmm. fill it up with leaves. Yep. Pull it up in, I mean, that anything that gives you insulation. Doesn't smell real good, but it's going to keep you alive. It sure ain't poison ivy. Got to deal with that here and there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, the, don't scratch it. Can you get poison ivy in the winter? Yeah. Can you not? Yeah, you can get it right from the, just from the, uh, from like, the vine. vines, yeah, that's right. Because well, I got a couple of vines there. Don't, ever, don't ever break the vines and get that on you, because that's way worse. Yeah. And the, from my understanding, too, that you can actually get it like you use a pair of gloves. Uh-huh. Two days later, you pick your gloves up. See, I don't, I don't catch poison, so right. well, I do. My wife does. Smoke <laughs> 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 from a fire, yeah. yeah. I'm one of the neighbors. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 
I know my wife, the reason I say you can get it in winter, because we dug horseradish and it was after all the leaves were right. turned over brown and all the leaves are off the other tree. And that stump had still the roots right. growing up the side of it. She well, this, it. this thing, I got a tree there at the house and the poison's killing it. And it's got like two of them big vines, like squirrel vines growing on the side. And I was going to cut like a three foot choke out of it. I'm still going to do it. But I didn't know yeah, it'll kill it. whether or not I need to take precautions. Yeah, take precautions. Yeah. Oh, you guys want to take a